Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We'll bring this meeting of the Nukalau City Council of report July 15th to order, and I welcome the guest, administration, and fellow councilmen. With that, Mrs. Burner. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Shammy. Here. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. Seven members present. And with that, we'll have the invocation with Chief Tristan. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. We thank you for this city, Lord, and we pray that you be in this meeting tonight. Let thy perfect will and only your perfect will be done. Bless our troops, their families, our first responders, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And with that, we need action on the minutes of Coming. July the 1st. Good to go. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Minutes accepted, accepted 7 0. Uh, communications regarding. Uh, Ordinance 2024-34. Would you like to go ahead, Mr. Bridge? Uh, that was just for, as, as I described in your email, a reference. Should council want to look at the whole section since you'll be voting on a portion of that ordinance tonight? Do you want to go into that ordinance or now or you want to put that back down? No, again, it was just for reference. So, yeah, that one small section for the penalties, what was changing. So just in case council had any questions about the rest of it, it's just for the reference part of it. We don't need to change any ordinance on the schedule, on the agenda, no, sir. Right. Does anybody have any questions in regard to that ordinance? Okay. If not, we'll go on to the city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the city manager report. And starting off with our city manager report, our service report with the assistant city manager, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, starting under your public works department, um, dirt patching is, is getting close. We had to put that on the back burner a little bit. One is due to the last item of Heritage Hall area has been hydro seeded. It was kind of looking like a, a green color here the other day. But we got all this area hydro seeded and luckily we've been getting just a decent amount of rain and, and sunshine. So it hasn't washed it out and it's not been too much heat to uh, not let it grow. Uh, pickleball court, there is an update compared to uh, when I posted the um, or gave the report to Mr. Bridge uh, July 20th. So next week we are scheduled to go and get the pickleball courts finished up and painted. Um, Moving on to the water department, uh, the big one on this is that citywide lead service line inventory update. Uh, you know, I think we're somewhere around 13% received. We do have an of the um, mailed or mailed or delivered uh, sheets. We do have the online uh, way you can get on there and fill out that form so you don't have to come up. Um, you can call in, we can call out. We're right now we're getting ready to look at trying to get someone to come out and go door to door, start setting appointments, do afternoon, evening times to, to try and get this done. You know, since most people will be at work during the daytime and we're trying to you know, get this inventory updated. Uh, moving down to the reconstruction resurfacing, uh, we are set for this here probably within the next month or two to go and get our portion of West Washington and Villa and those ADA ramps done. Uh, we are up to about 24 ADA ramps that we're getting replaced north side of Lake, which will include some of Spinning, Willowick, Pepperwood, trying to get the most we can with the money we currently have. Um, striping contract has already started. They have done some striping over here on this side of the county. 
but they are still on track to get us our Lake Street, Smith, Jefferson, and hit that white edge line on 235. Um, Carlisle Park phase one, I just spoke with the contractor Friday. He is still waiting the material because we went with a black vinyl fence and it's taking a little longer than if we just went with basic chain link. So uh, we, I am staying in contact with them to try and get that done as soon as possible. And I'm not sure if most people know the ODNR Nature Works grant is complete. We finally took the snow fence down there. Uh, that seed ended up going in uh, when it was the hottest time of the, uh, of, or having to get a good week of no rain. So we finally got that grass grown. We did pull the fence down. Right now I'm working on the reimbursement process to get us back our portion of the funds from that grant. I do already have the sign that is required. I'll be posting that down there. There is currently an older style. We'll be taking that off and putting the new style up. Um, disc golf course, still waiting on my second um, price for clearing. And then we will uh, keep moving with that. It is kind of a, <coughs> some, some of the people that I've contacted, um, you know, because it's not a, a super rush, but what they want to do is get in here when some of the leaves come off so they can actually walk through, see what we've got to clear and stuff like that. Um, any additional items uh, we can discuss. I know with CDBG, it's up at the state level right now for approval. Um, the Clark County phase two for the, um, or I'm sorry, Carlisle Park phase two, that is also with the uh, state right now. You got approved through the county. And uh, that is all my report. I can entertain any questions on it or anything else that comes to mind. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Kitko? Go ahead, Mr. Lindsay. On the uh, fence for the uh, basketball court, you said it was going to be vinyl? It's a chain link fence, but it's vinyl coated. Okay. That clears it up because you yeah. said vinyl, <laughs> I thought. And that'll last, what, 30 seconds? Right. You know. No, my apologies. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? If not, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. Moving on to the city manager report, our fire and EMS report with Fire Chief, Chief Trustee. Mayor, Council of Citizens, for the month of June, New Carlisle uh, Fire Division responded to 110 EMS calls in the city. The division responded to three fire-related calls, three good intent calls, three false alarms, five hazardous conditions with no fire and 10 service calls. We had five EMS calls answered by mutual aid by Pike Township, five mutual aid calls answered by Bethel Clark due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered two mutual aid calls for Pike Township and eight mutual aid calls for Bethel Clark and two for Bethel Miami. Our total run count at, the, at this time for the year is at the time of report was 832. Right now we are at 864 since the last time last report we have ran 139 runs. Uh, we still have smoke alarms for citizens. All they need to do is call the station or stop by, and we can help either we can install them or help citizens get to them. You entertain any questions or any questions? Comments? Go ahead, Mr. Lindsay. For the purpose of explanation to the community and the viewers on. The camera, can you explain the good intent call? A good intent call is just something that we go on if it's say a person just needs help with something or it may be um, water line, say their water line is broken in their house, they can't turn the water off. Uh, we'll go and try to help turn it off for them up to where no, we don't turn off at the street, uh, but we'll help turn off that. It's just, it, it could be an animal rescue, it could be a lockout, that type of thing. Okay, thank you, sir. Anyone else? If not. Thank you, Fire Chief. Moving on to City Manager Report, uh, Planning and Zoning Report, uh, and Mayor's Court Report, so I'll give that one real quickly. Uh, for the period of June 23rd through July 6th, we had 52 total violations, 23 total properties violated. That equates to about 2.26 uh, average violations per property. We had 21 closed violations. Uh, four submitted the mayor's court and three property uh, extension granted. We also have the mayor's court report attached to the planning department as well. 
And on any questions on the planning and zoning department report? If not, I can go into the police report, sir. Okay. And for the police stats for the month of June, we have 224 calls taken, 24 reports, 30 assists, five criminal arrests, one felony arrest, one misdemeanor arrest, three warrants, 47 traffic stops, 26 traffic warnings, 21 moving citations, 567 business checks, 12 code enforcement follow-ups, zero traffic qu crashes, and one parking citation. And under notes here, uh, we would like to announce that Deputy Jacob O'Brien and his wife has welcomed uh, a baby girl on June 20th. Uh, Deputy O'Brien is down here in our uh, stands tonight. Uh, and he had taken some time off to be with his family, but we are glad to have him back. So again, congratulations on the new family member, sir. I'd be happy to entertain any questions or comments regarding the uh, police reports. Anyone have anything? No. And moving on to city manager report, our finance report with our finance director, Ms. Colleen Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, council and members of the public. The June uh, revenue, is $761,505.14 and our June expenses are $794,465.95. So our total revenue to date is $5,370,661.95 and that is running about 70% over our estimated budget. Our expenses for the year to date are 4 million $436,912.26, and that is right at 50% of our budget. The statement of cash ending balance is $7,693,333.94. Our bank accounts are all balanced, and the banks have uh, $9,048,740.91. Then on our income tax comparison of this time, this month of June from last month, we're down a little, about 12% collection from this year compared to last year. The total um, is 1% for the whole year. The Attorney General has been doing some of our collections and they have We've received uh, $21,675 from their efforts on the old accounts that have been there for years. Mayor's Court. Mayor's Court took in a revenue of $6,582 with a year to date of $24,659.80. The rest of the reports are all on the council packet, and I can entertain any questions. I do have a couple extra reports. If anyone have any questions for the finance director? I guess not. Move to accept finance report. Second. Second. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Seven zero. Mm -hmm. That was finance, right? Okay, we need a motion then to accept the uh, mayor's court. Who's to accept? I heard Grim. I did. You were the first. You're the second. He's first. He was first. Okay. He's first. I'm sorry. Okay. Grim first. Eggleston second. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grim. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. 770. All right. Moving right along. And thank you, Ms. Harris. And moving off the city manager report. Under discussion topics, I got a few items for council to discuss. Um, at the last meeting, I told uh, let council know that we're working on some citizens to engage our citizens and our business owners as well. Uh, these surveys are going to have basic questions that uh, detail for communities for our, uh, uh, I'm sorry for our community survey about average income uh, average house size age of that house what they like about the city what they don't like about the city and then your business survey is going to have more gear, uh, questions geared towards 
you know, how many uh, people you employ, again, what you like about the city, what you don't like about the city. So these are just rough drafts. I want council to kind of look at those. We can uh, revisit those again at the first meeting in August should council want to maybe uh, take some time to look at those and make some recommendations. But this is going to be great data that we can use across many spectrums. Um, one, for our comp plan development uh, that we'll be hopefully getting at by the end of this year or next year, where our citizens heads at. So again, this data is always going to be useful. But again, just wanted to let you guys know we are in the process of engaging the citizens and your business owners. Please look over these surveys. If you have any questions or comments to those, we can directly address those in two weeks if you have some time to kind of look at them and, and digest them. Um, Kroger opioid settlement. We're going to be having some legislation to you next council meeting um, to see if council was interested in joining the Kroger opioid settlement. So quite a few months ago, uh, we did decide, even though it was late, uh, late in the submission process, to go ahead and join the opioid settlement that the state of Ohio had uh, joined as well. Today, we have not received any money for that. Any money that we do receive for these opioid settlements, we'll have to do an MOU and pass that on to Clark County. There's just a lot of stipulations that we have to follow should we accept that money. Um, you have to use it for opioid treatment addiction. Uh, you can't just use it to build a new shelter house. It has to be earmarked for certain things to reduce that opioid side of uh, the impact it had to our community. Um, and since we don't have the means to really track that in house, we had decided that when we do get the money, it would be passed on to the county. So we would do the same thing here. And every month, I am part of our region committee to where we get together and we speak with some community leaders out of Springfield. And they are doing some great things. It is centered to be around the city of Springfield and that immediate area. So that is the cat and mouse game that we always play dealing with the, the county is they send their, tend to put their money in where the population center is. Doesn't mean our citizens can't take advantage of the program, it's just not gonna be at their front door. Um, but the legislation will be coming next week. It will be in an emergency measure, so we'll need six council members to vote on that. Um, I hadn't had time to really research the ins and outs of this particular settlement, um, and it, there, there is an August 12th deadline. So again, if should council want to do that, we do have to have some paperwork back by them to August 12th. So again, wanted to put it in your ear. A lot of the same stipulations that we had last time around, it's just we get the money and we have to use it for certain things. I don't know what dollar amount we're supposed to get. I haven't come to that part yet, have not been told that. Um, but for a comparison, with the quite a, I think there's four of them we entered last time, we're supposed to get told about 17,000. Again, we have not received that. So I'm assuming that's gonna be a lot less than um, 17,000 since it is just one settlement with Kroger. Um, but again, you'll have some legislation on that next week. Should council want to review that legislation and enter that uh, lawsuit, to simply pass that emergency measure. If not, business as usual, we decline it and we just, we move on. Any questions pertaining to that? No, okay. So moving on, recreational and medicinal marijuana. So we finally got the call regarding a business uh, potentially open up in New Carlisle. We don't know if it's recreational or marijuana. Uh, I haven't really called that person back yet because it's very close to having your next council meeting. So I really wanted to gauge council's opinion on where you guys are at with this. Right now, we don't have any ban. We don't have any moratorium against it. Um, some other municipalities have, a lot of them haven't. So that'll be up for council to decide. You know, um, When you do do something recreational like that, since it is voter approved in the state of Ohio, it's going to be a state agency facility. That is no different than your state agency liquor store. Um, so there's pros and cons with that. There's also the medicinal side of things that through my experience, it's a much cleaner, much more inviting um, facility. I haven't seen a recreational site because they've never been permitted in Ohio. I know they have some in surrounding states. That is ultimately not a administration decision, but right now, uh, which should someone come and apply, I'm not sure if we could restrict them. So council needs to maybe have a work session um, to decide where your viewpoints are with this, recreational and medicinal, to find out moving forward if you guys would want to do any sort of mortuarium or ban on those. Uh, one of the things with recre recreational sales is what I've seen is 36% of that taxes does go back to the local or host community but that's what it says, local or host community. So I think we really need to figure out what that language actually means. I would hate for us to agree to do it and get 36% say it's going to come to us, but then some loophole says the county can take half. So we really need to decide and figure out 
the ins and outs of this. Um, but at least wanted to let council know to start thinking about that. Um, you guys can task me to start, excuse me, researching and anything, uh, anything on behalf of that, I can start that process for you and then maybe take it from there. Uh, but I think it's about time that maybe council does take a look at that since it's coming rather sooner rather than later, I would say. Anyone have any comment on it? I would say go ahead and research it. Really, okay. Why don't we uh, kind of leave that open for a uh, discussion next Monday night at the work session? So Monday night's work session is kind of big. Um, is. So maybe can, maybe we can talk about it. I may need some time to research and get some ground stuff going. To be honest with you. Um, so maybe at a meeting in August or something, we can take a look at it that. again. It doesn't sound like there's a pressing need to from you from council. Um, so uh, let me get some research because I kind of want to get to the num numbers of maybe who's banned them, who's not, uh, what size of city or township has banned them versus small municipalities. See where it goes from there, um, and then what the data unfolds. And with this particular, we won't be able to use a lot of the state of Ohio data. I plan on using some Michigan data because I know they've had recreational sales now for quite some time and then find out what those state agency stores look like and what they've done to local communities. And I think that's probably the most comparable data that we can get at this point in time. <coughs> Go ahead, Bill. We had and may still have, I don't hear much about it anymore, a drug problem in town for quite a few years. <clears throat> of course, it was all illegal drugs, and I'm assuming it's still there, uh, even though we don't hear much about it, or at least I don't hear about it on the street. Mm -hmm. My first impression is to ban it, not let it come into the community. Uh, you have a good point to where if we get 30, was it 31 percent? 36. 36 percent of the, of the tax or whatever off of it. That has to come back through the state. They're going to take an administration fee and more than likely go to the county. They'll take an administration fee and time it's all said and done, we'll be lucky to get 15 or 20 percent. So I think it would just create uh, more work and headache for the administration and finance director and quite possibly it would up calls and stuff in the city people driving under the influence uh, those are really high right now according to the local news uh, they're probably already stopping people under the influence for alcohol so like I said, my first impression would be just to request the city manager to have an ordinance if he can get it that quick. I'm sure he can and have it in front of us in two weeks to, to ban it if that's what council, the direction council wants to take on that. And with all that said, how do you make that a motion? Can I'm I ask sure a question before you guys for vote, not to interrupt? Yeah, well, I ain't got just a second yet. Uh, so are you thinking about banning both recreational and medicinal or just recreational? Medicinal, Medici medicinal really is, if, I'm, if I understand it correctly, is what they call the CBC, I think it is, the liquid? CBD. CBD. It's, it's, it's all kind of forms. Medicinal is all kind of forms. Is it? And well, that, that requires, I think, a doctor's prescription for that. Mm -hmm. I don't so much have a problem with that because it doesn't have... But is it the P, PCP, I think, in it that makes you high? I mean, I'm not a scientist, but I'm just going from things I hear from the news. So I wouldn't have a problem with the medical being here because you need a script from a doctor to get it. Docs, a lot of docs are still reluctant to prescribe it. Uh, so I wouldn't have a problem with that. But the marijuana itself, recreational, recreational stuff, because it does have the 
the chemical in it that makes you high. And quite honestly, when you get high, you get stupid. Uh, the uh, we don't we you know we have enough problems in town without adding more problems to our town, and the police department has enough to do without stopping people that's all over the road and causing accidents because they can't see to drive. So it, it's up to council and whatever they want to do. And I think Mr. Bond has a question. You have a motion. On, go ahead, Mr. Bond. I'll I'll second that motion, um, but. The question I had, so when you're asking about um, for medicinal, I mean, right now somebody could go to their doctor and get a prescription for it. You're just saying, if I'm hearing you right, that we would allow places in town to sell it for medicinal purposes versus right now they're not allowed to sell it for medicinal purposes? It would, uh, there's no restriction in it right now. Right now it'd be like no different if you have a prescription for your, let's we'll say marijuana cream tea cream to go mm -hmm. you would go to that facility to pick it up and it'd be like going to cbs to get your town all there's a pharmacist there they go behind and get your lock stuff up and sign for it so it would be an actual facility strictly for medicinal purposes only so it'd be a dispensary yes essentially for medicinal for, okay that's what i would. whereas recreational anyone can just show up at any point in time right. and say give me that i'll take it and leave any further? Go ahead, Ken. <clears throat> I, I think, think it's Mr. a. Mr. Bond was done. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that uh, I'm okay with that actually. For the medicinal side of it, I have to think about that. If I may. Go wait, let me. I got to answer Kathy. his question. To answer his question. Well, just hang on. Let me get <laughs> Kathy. I was just going to say that I think it's too big a topic to make my split decision. I don't really want to do that. It's been a long time since I've looked up marijuana, and I, I really don't <laughs> know a lot about it. it. And I think I'd rather, for the citizens, at least comprehend some of the, like PCP, I'm not sure that's in it. I don't know. Well, it's, like it's I said, I, I, I don't, I don't want to make a rash decision. I'd like a little time to think about it before we vote on it. That's my opinion. Go ahead, Bill, you had some the, the medistical part of it is you need a script or you can't get it. Right. Uh, it's no difference than going to the drugstore and getting your Xanax or whatever you're on, you know, a heart medication or whatever. The uh, Joe Blow off the street can't walk in there and get anything because they're not going to give it to him. It, it'd be against the law. On the other hand, the, the marijuana, they have, I don't know, last time I seen a photo on TV, about it, they had like a hundred different containers, and they all have different weird names, and you can get so much of this and so much of that, and and I don't know offhand how much you're allowed to have legally in your possession. I think it's an ounce or less. I know you're actually allowed to, in certain areas, you're actually allowed to grow it yourself, even. Well, yeah, you so, can I mean, grow it, but that. you're limited to a yeah. certain number of plants. I think. Yes. Three, three or four, I think, is the max. Yeah. Yeah, per household, for personal use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but I thought when they passed that, there was a limit. Like a, I thought it was an ounce that you could have in your possession and not wind up in the county motel. You know, uh, so so that's the difference between the two. One will get you high and one won't. Well, yeah, yeah. So and and there's a lot of people that use it. They believe they use it for. Various things, joint pain. I mean, I, I know when neuropathy, my dad, all kinds of stuff. If I'm, I know when my dad was suffering with cancer, the end of his life, it he was prescribed that, and it helped with the pain just in a short period of time there before he passed. But um, yeah, I'm probably okay with the medicinal side of it. I think. But. And and if I may answer Kathy's question. <laughs> This is just to have the manager present a ordinance to us to vote on. This isn't to make it law today, the vote. Right. So he, he would have to have an ordinance, come up with the ordinance or whatever, and, and have uh, the, law, the law director. And then which he way comes we back would to want us. that written, wouldn't we? Uh, See, I, that's the thing. I don't think I'm ready to direct. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not on board with any any 
even though it's legal, in my mind, it's still illegal, any marijuana to be smoked out here and die rid of it. You know, the, uh, just this last holiday, I think on the news, the state patrol, I forget how many, several hundred people they caught, they stopped under the influence of marijuana while they was driving. And it, it makes you drunk like alcohol does, and they, they don't know what it is, but I guess they tested for, for marijuana. But anyways, that's all I got to say on it. Well, we My, have a motion. Go ahead, Mr. Bowles. The only thing I'll add is, you know, when we're looking at the image of our city and, um, you know, wanting to have these developments and, and families come here and things, I believe that a dispensary is looked at in a negative light for young families trying, coming to move to your town. So um, I think that, for me, is one reason why I would be in favor of an ordinance to not have a dispensary so, for recreation. Go ahead, Dave. I'd like to see the city manager do his research and see exactly who would get the revenue from it and how things have gone in Michigan or other states that have had it legalized for a while. Basically, you have a motion on the floor and a second, so. Correct, and can you repeat the motion for me, please? Yeah. Because <laughs> well, you just said, uh, what was I, you talking said about? Me, I should ban it, and matter of fact, yeah. I'll make the motion now. Right. That was what you said. The, it, I, I, the motion would be to ban the recreational, uh, I guess marijuana or narcotics or whatever, anything that would be considered recreational, and allow a dispensary for the medicinal uh, because it requires a script. It, is, it would be just like a drugstore. Go ahead. The recreational ban. If the motion could just say to direct the city manager to have the law director um, draft some legislation, because we're going to do a moratorium on yeah. the ban, which is going right. to require legislation for the recreational side right. of things. So the motion tonight won't ban it. It'll have to be voted on at the next meeting. Right. Um, yeah, this is just to have you or whoever to have the city or the, uh, the city law director come up with the ordinance according to law, okay, so according to the codes right. and stuff. I mean, it, no, I'm not making a motion to ban everything and do it tonight. I know we need an ordinance. Uh, and I know the city the uh, city law director will have to do whatever he does, the research on the law, to see what, because it's a new law. I'm sure he don't know a thing about it, except well, for what you find out, you hear on the news, and who can believe the news anymore. The legislation we can definitely have done for the first meeting in August, because we can look how other cities have ordered that legislation, especially that moratorium. Right. The research side of things will probably have to be at that second meeting in August, just because there's a lot to tackle. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. okay, what am I, I saying? What am I? <laughs> yeah, Randy will write it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else want to jump in here? If not, do you want me to repeat it for you? Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Apparently, there are going to have to be two ordinances, one for the moratorium to ban the marijuana. Recreational. Or the recreational, yes. The other one, am I correct, Mr. Bridge? The other one is going to be to uh, allow a dispensary for, for medicinal purposes with a script, prescription from a physician. Now that may <clears throat> that may have to be broken up into two different motions tonight to get all that done. If I I can do it all in one, because they're going to come back as two separate ones. I think well, it'll I be all. Yeah, right. I kind of separated already. Say the the ban on. Say that again. I'm on sorry. recreational. Ban on recreational. Recreational. Marijuana. I got that part. Marijuana. Okay or whatever they call it. <laughs> okay. So a simp you're the, a ban. A ban on recreational. You cannot sell it in the city. Marijuana. 
not to be sold in the city. Let's just let's well, do that one, and then we'll do the next right. one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it would be a, 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 a band on it to where we wouldn't have a facility here in town selling, so okay. you could just walk in and get whatever you want, like a Nick Diamond store. Okay. Lindsay was the first, and Bond was the second. All right. Councilman Shannon. Oh, do you have the second one written? Uh, allow a dispensary for medicinal purposes. Right. Okay. All right. Yes. So we'll do the first one first. The well, we can vote on both of them together because they're going to come back to us as two separate ordinances. Okay. You want so one? We yeah, we can make one vote for both of them. But when they come back, it'll be two separate ordinances. And it'll be and two different times because one's going to take more research than the other one. You said yes, right? I said Shammy. Councilwoman Wright. Yeah, I get it. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. No. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. No. Councilman Bond. Yes. All right, that is passes five to two. Okay. Going. All right, uh, hazard mit mitigation plan update. I've been mentioning this the past few council meetings, so we did have a meeting uh, with Michelle Pistick and then Fire Chief. Just wanted to bring council up to date. Um, one of the things that Michelle said is a lot of uh, cities partner with their long-term care facilities to get them some maybe uh, um, supplies that they need. Um, so with that, I turned around and I called Sherry Falker. She runs uh, uh, Van Crest out here in New Carlisle. And I wanted to ask her if she was 100% covered by generators, and she replied no. So we do have them on our agenda to meet with them in the next couple of weeks to find out what we can do to assist them to becoming 100% covered by generators. So she's talking to her higher ups there in Van Wert, where their location is, the headquarters, and then getting the information we need. And then I'll be having a meeting with them and then taking that back to um, the hazard mitigation plan uh, little committee that we have going on. That is just a drop in the bucket with all what we're trying to do. It's just one aspect of it. So I don't want council to think that's all we're doing. We'll be doing some other things. But I at least wanted to let council know that should Sherry or anyone else at Bancrest approach you in the coming weeks and thank you for that so you guys aren't caught off, off guard. Um, water office shattering by Vice Mayor Eagleson and Councilwoman Wright. So I know you two had come in and you had uh, looked at our water department a little bit and you may be uh, had saw the ins and outs. Um, uh, the Colleen's department has done some really good suggestions on some code changes. I was kind of waiting to bring that to council to you two had your chance to go in and shadow that department. Now that you guys have done that, I would like to maybe have a meeting with you two and then Ms. Harris's department and then bring forth some of those changes and kind of guide something and bring something back to council as a whole. And again, that would be to potentially, and I stress potentially, to amend those water codes to make it easier on your citizens. In order for us to do that, we would need a motion by council to allow you to, to come in and meet with uh, the appropriate staff. Where's council's thoughts with that? What do you think? I like it. <laughs> so I have a question for you, Mr. Pertain. Go ahead, Bill. Can you give us a little more information on what you just said? They had wanted to come in and shadow the water department. Water, right? Okay, at the city office. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That okay. was discussed at prior meetings, I right. believe, yeah. yeah. So they had both done that, and now that they're completed doing that, I want to share some other information with them and then get some opinions from them so we can bring it back to the rest of the council. Okay. And this is where we regard your water shutoffs, et cetera, okay. stuff like that. How it, how it impacts your citizens, basically. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm I got gonna, a motion. Do I have a second? A second. Who was the first? No, who was the first? First was the uh, vice I mayor. Second was Kathy. I think he thinks he did. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. Bond. Quick question. Was this pertaining to like the billing and yeah. the, all that when we discussed it? Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's good. Is there any further discussion on that? I will make a comment. I think that it runs very smoothly. I was impressed with the things I saw, and I like some of the changes that have been made. I just think a few little tweaks maybe will make it hopefully perfect. 
All right, nothing else. Okay. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chammy? Yes. I will we'll be in touch with coordinating schedules. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the city manager report. We've got a, a policy or other items council is working on. So citizen of the year plaque, we designed that plaque a couple years ago. Need some guidance on where council wants to take that program. Um, we had looked at maybe some Enon doing like a citizen of the year, maybe even a junior citizen of the year. I know some council members had maybe want to give a, you know, a plaque to maybe someone who doesn't live in the city, but then also at the same time contribute so much to the livelihood of our place. So again, that's all going to be a council council uh, program, but we, we'd happy to get that program rolling for you. Again, um, still need to know what level of uh, how many wards you want to get about as far as your senior, uh, maybe a citizen, non-citizen, student, et cetera, stuff like that. So that's something council would have to have internal discussions on and then guide administration. But we would love to get that going for you. The actual um, award we made is actually, it's very, very nice. So we'd like to um, get some of those made and give them out to the citizens. Any comment? And you say next week is pretty full. <coughs> on the work session, yes. Yeah. yeah. And maybe that's something where council maybe in the maybe week or two or the next meeting maybe think about maybe two or three people committee to find out what you want to do and maybe streamline it like that and then we can run from it on this side of the table All right. um, upcoming legislation and monroe meadows tiff legislation uh, we also have um, the amendment to chapter 260 that should have been taken off and then we also have the incentive save policy that is actually going to be entered at the first meeting in August and we didn't have time to finish it and making it um, outlined as it would fit our code how we need to it's really tedious work so that's been pushed off a little bit we'll get that to you next meeting and city employee bonding now, additional discussion topics um, we have enclosed a card that we got from a citizen very nice card thanking the administration so hopefully council took their time to look at that I do believe we maybe put it on Facebook or our website. If not, we'll get definitely get it up there as well, potentially. But again, thank you to that citizen who took the time out to send such a great card. We don't get we don't get a lot of those. When we do get them, it's always nice to see that. Um, that's all I have for the city manager report, and I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Anybody have anything for Mr. Bridge? Guess not. Okay. So we'll move on to committee reports, which I don't think we have any that I'm aware of. We'll go into comments from members of the public. Please limit your comments to five minutes or less. Uh, Vice Mayor will time you. So if you'll come up and to the podium and name an address. Hello, I'm Michael Green, 304 West Washington Street. Uh, uh, kind of a loaded question for Mr. Bridge and Mr. Kitko. Uh, regarding alleyways um, what is the frequency Excuse me, sir yes please address the mayor okay and, and what frequency are alleyways paved or resurfaced and then how can I find out when the last time the alleyway I live on was paved or resurfaced and then what can I do to uh, urge the city to repave or resurface the alleyway that I live on and I'm going to refer that to mr. bridge <laughs> Um, I do not have any information on when it was paid last. Um, to my knowledge, we don't have uh, a alley repair list. Um, that's my knowledge of it. Mr. Kiko is in charge of those departments, so I will let him speak on his behalf as his departments as well. Oh, we just maintain alleys. I do not have record from uh, even years before I got here on alleys. And typically, we put alleys behind any of the other roadways that we do. Uh, for instance, I got uh, crossing and Drake I'm doing and I'm working my way through the main routes first uh, where everybody drives on mm -hmm. do people drive on alleys yes they do so um, more so now we're able to focus more of our dirt patching repair on the alleys because as we resurface our other streets we're able to put more focus on them but to resurface and put asphalt on an alley prior to putting it onto a drive like uh, West Washington here or Smith or Henry or one of them I'd probably um, have a lot of people fill in the seats for for that to do an alley prior to a street. Okay. 
May I ask which alley you have reference to? Uh, the one that I live off of, I don't, they're not named or numbered, so I don't know how to describe it other than to give you my address and say it's on the east side of uh, my property. But uh, I think the, I, I don't know what you called it, Dura patch or something mm -hmm. like that, that was done. Uh, the neighbor across the street noticed and asked how we were able to get that accomplished. I said I filled out a complaint form twice to the city and it came out. They came out and did it, I think, when I wasn't home or something. And uh, it lasted a couple months. I, I can't really tell where it was done now, uh, which is why I ask about repaving or resurfacing. So, What's your address? 304 West Washington Street. Got you. All right. So are you having runoff from the alley come into your yard or anything, water runoff? I've taken pictures of the puddles in the alleyway uh, after it rains, and I think they were anywhere from two to four or five inches deep. So they're significantly large puddles that do butt up against my property. That's good. And then I find quite a large, a, a large sum of, uh, of debris is the right word, but, but gravel and loose rock that find its way into my garage that I have to sweep out very frequently and sure. that uh, accumulates from just driving through the alleyway. Is there a lot of potholes? Yes, sir. Okay. Which, like today, there's a lot of standing water in those potholes. And I, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one, so I don't want to say I'm, I'm the only one out here, uh, you know, having these sorts of issues, but I just, I can, I can see that there was once blacktop underneath the gravel, so I just didn't know um, if that was on the city's radar to have that sort of thing done. So. I think at that point, uh, do we think that it might be possible that we could take a look at these alleys and see what, where on our radar we might be able to put them for some work later on? I think it's an opportunity to kind of maybe look at some alleys, observe them, and find out which ones are causing undue hardship to our citizens that live off them, and then hopefully lead that into maybe <clears throat> some sort of um, alley repair list. But I do want to stress that we have our main roads we do need to focus on as well. doesn't mean we can't find time or, some, um, you know, maybe some allocations to do some alley work, but we need to uh, maintain our massive, ma ma big main rate uh, before we do any alleys. But... In this particular case, like I said, there's undue hardships where he has gravel coming into his alley. I think those deserve immediate attention. And then, but for us to go out and do that kind of stuff, we just, we gotta gather the data first. Um, so I'm gonna get Mr. Green's phone number. We'll take his case by case and then see what we can do to fix it um, more permanently down the road. And, I, and I, I thank you for understanding. I completely understand that the main roads come first. I, I agree with that completely and I think that uh, Due to the position where, where I live, there may be more traffic because we have some apartments behind my house. So, um, you know, where normally there's one house and one garage, we have one property where there's um, four, five, six people living. So and that's great. So we can put that maybe if we develop that alley ranking as you know, we take into account those that get more traffic though, uh, than other ones, for sure. I think over the years, we've <clears throat> made a great improvement on pulling the garbage trucks out of the alleys which was the probably one of the worst things that we did when they went down that alley but now that they're out of there i think we're getting a lot more use out of them. we still have a garbage truck that comes down and it is actually quite early it hmm. somewhere between five and six o'clock monday morning uh, i've had them run through my yard twice so i put my garbage can on the very far edge of where the alley starts in my yard. And I think that's because of the apartments behind my building, or I'm sorry, my house, uh, they have a, more of a communal dumpster that they put their trash in. So we still have a garbage truck that goes down our alley. Okay, let us take a look at that, Mr. Green. Okay. All right, that, that's all, thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Um, I'm Josie. I'm the general manager of the new McDonald's that's getting built here in New Carlisle. Um, I'm just trying to get myself involved in the community, um, so I just wanted to come here. Um, I'm new to this. Um, I'm not from New Carlisle, so I just wanted to introduce myself. If you guys have any help trying to get myself in the community, um, trying to get applications, because we are a brand new store, um, I would love your guys' feedback and stuff. When do you anticipate opening? So our projection date is August 22nd. August 22nd. And... 
you're offering free meals for all council people. Well, that, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The, wait a minute. The, the administration Auditor makes Ohio a lot more money. They can buy theirs. I did not mean that. <laughs> I didn't mean anything. Do you guys have a fire department here? Yeah. Yeah, we really can't there. accept okay. that, but just um, well, I think my supervisor and my um, boss um, and my owner would definitely love to, you know, come down here because we do would like, you know, for maybe all of you guys for our grand opening. Um, are we gonna, are we going to have a ribbon cutting? We are. Oh, cool. Wow. I think I think everybody will be there. Okay, great. And then um, I was just saying we had a fire department just because uh, we um, wish you the sidewalks. Um, they said like usually they hook up like their hoses. Um, if I get more involved in the community. So I just want to introduce myself. We wish you great success. Well, thank you so much. Right. That means more tax revenue. <laughs> it was nice talking to you outside. So a lot of cheeseburgers. <laughs> Anything we can do. Here you go, ma'am. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you. Take care. You will. This 22nd August. When are they open? 822. So just just let us know what time your uh, ribbon cutting is, and we'll see if we can have a couple people show up. All right. Anyone else? Go ahead, Dave. Council. I don't think uh, David Peters, sixteen eighty five Addison, New Carlisle Road. Uh, I don't think this has been brought up before, but I'd like to put it on council's radar to consider banning future businesses from using window LED strip lights. Uh, as somebody who lives across the street from the one business in town currently using them, they're extremely bright and distracting. Uh, when I step out of my door, they catch my eye, and that's all I see. And I can see Dodge, IGA, soon to be McDonald's, and Safe and Sound, but those are the only ones I see nowadays. So I was thinking for the aesthetic for the new communities that Councilman Bond brought up, and for the safety of motorists, and for the pleasing um, nature of the people who are fortunate and unfortunate enough to live in or uh, commercial area that count I'd like council to consider future measures on limiting or banning that type of window lighting thank you I think uh, mr. bridge might pass that on to uh, I guess the uh, planning director I can pass it on to uh, yeah we can do that um, those type of lights are in every vape shop no matter where you're at um, so I'll look at our local code first to see if there's anything we can do about the illumination right. brightness on that. I don't think there is because that usually deal with, you know, <clears throat> lights that deal with ground ground lights, poles, etc. Um, but uh, me and Mr. Peters already had a conversation about it, so it's already my word, word uh, agenda to look at. I'm not sure how far we're going to get uh, because, like I said, they're just like that in every other place I've seen them at. Uh, with bonus with this one though is it's set so far back from the road. Some of these are real close to the road. Uh, so they are bright. I don't know why they want them because you go in there, you can't even see their product. You're so blinded by it. Then you come out seeing purple dots everywhere, <coughs> everywhere. So it is a issue. Um, I don't like them just because I think it's an unsightly look for our city. Um, but that's already something I already planned on looking into. All right. Anyone else? If not, I guess we'll move on to uh, ordinances and resolutions. We have no resolutions. We have Ordinance 2024-31. This was introduced on July 1st. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the disposal of an unneeded city vehicle. So moved. Eggleston Chamois. They got the first and second. Yes. Uh, explanation of this vehicle. Uh, this is the uh, donation of the vehicle that is no longer in service for the city. It is being used as our radar car out there on Hensley Park. This is the one we're talking about. Yeah, for you. The decoy car. Um, so we got a request from Clark State. They're needing some vehicles for their um, law enforcement program. So I said at the, one of the previous meetings, you'd have some an ordinance in front of you since it is getting rid of unneeded or un, uh, uh, unwarranted city property that does require the ordinance. Uh, so that is what is in front of city council tonight. We'd be happy to entertain any questions regarding this particular legislative matter. matter. Anybody have anything? If not, Mrs. Burns. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That passes 7 0. 
Moving on to Ordinance 2024-32. This was introduced on July 1st. Public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance providing for the issuance of not to exceed $210,000 <coughs> general obligation bonds series 2024 by the city of New Carlisle, Ohio for the purpose of paying the cost of purchasing a new street sweeper and necessary appurtenances a there too. Can't even say that name. So many. Second. Close enough. Uh, Shami Eggleston. Explanation of this ordinance. So uh, we uh, had approached council uh, regarding uh, lending, uh, buying a street sweeper. Um, we were going to do a commercial loan through that. Um, during that process, we had found out uh, very late in the game here that the auditor of state now requires us to do a bonding measure opposed to just regular commercial loans. So with that requires bond council and a slew of legislation. And that is what is in front of council tonight is your street sweeper um, bond to order uh, bond so we can order the street sweeper. Happy to in entertain any questions tonight. We do have our finance director on hand, um, and she'll be coming to uh, the meetings in the future as well. Um, but appropriate. Any world have anything? Come to you. <laughs> sure. Is this? Go ahead, Bill. Is this a ten-year bond? This is a five-year, and our goal is to get a. Um, we can actually have a. About midway through, we'll have a call date where we can maybe uh, re. Re, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Refinance, I'm sorry. Refinance those bonds. It is about a 5.65%. But if we have to have a bond to buy it, would we not have to have a bond if we refinanced it? Well, yeah, you just, yeah. we did the same thing back in 2017, sir, with the Twin Creeks infrastructure mm -hmm. bonds. Even though we had that bond, we refinanced for a shorter term and lesser interest rate, okay. but it was still a bond at the end of it. So it's just you're, you're, cl you're closing out one bond essentially to open up the other at a cheaper rate. So it would be paid off completely in 10 years? No, it would be paid off in five. I'm reading this. It says the project is at least five years and certified that the maximum maturity bond is 10 years. No, it's a five year, but we can't take the bond past 10 okay. years. That's their maximum limit they would ever give us on that thing, on the okay. sweeper. Okay. Hmm. Anyone else? So, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Kathy. That's okay. So, it is going to be paid off in five years? Yeah. Is that what the hope is? So, it'll be, you know, divided by five pretty much? Okay, then why would we need another bond? Why wouldn't we just use that five years? And if pay? you want to refinance it. But why would we want to refi? Usually you lose money when you refi. Maybe the interest rates fall down to 2%. Well, maybe. Okay. Yeah, you know, if they maybe. do, then yeah. So that's why you, you don't have to refinance. It's just an option. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. An option's fine. I guess we're done. Okay, Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? No. Councilman Shammy? No. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? No. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. All right, that passes four, two, three. Moving on to Ordinance 2024-33. Introduced July 1st. Yep. Okay. Um, or an ordinance amending a section of 850 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding city policy. So moved. Shammy Eggleston. Uh, explanation of this legislation piece. This is your uh, no-knock registry regarding uh, peddlers. So once council approves this, uh, it has a 15-day waiting period. But once it is effective, we will go ahead and uh, issue the do-knock not registry and all the other components that surround that program. Any questions? <clears throat> Mayor Cook? Yes. 
Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. And that passes 7 0. And the next, uh, the rest are just read only. Mm. We have Ordinance 2024 34, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 5th. An ordinance amending section 1060.99 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding garbage and rubbish collection and disposal. Ordinance 2024-35, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 5th. An ordinance providing for the submission to the electors of the city of New Carlisle proposed amendments to the preamble and articles two and three of the city charter. Ordinance 2024-36, introduced tonight, public hearing and action on August 5th. An ordinance providing for the submission to the electors of the City of New Carlisle proposed amendments to Article 5, 4 of the, Article 4 of the City Charter. Ordinance 2024-37, introduced tonight, public hearing and action on August 5th. An ordinance amending section 660.13 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding weeds and grasses. And uh, additional city business movie night uh, is night at the museum, which will be Saturday, July 27th at dusk here at Smith Park. And it's open for discussion on city-related business. Anybody have anything? I've got. I have a question. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, I had a guy knock on my door from Metronet the other night, uh, selling Metronet, and asking for his permit to be knocking on doors. Does all of them have, need a permit, or just the five that you? Each individual person has a. Yeah. And that's every day, correct? Mm -hmm. I informed him of that. He was not aware of it. He, uh, I told him, I said, you know, I says if somebody reports you, I call the PD on you. I said they'll escort you out of the city. <laughs> do you know his name? I do not remember his name. So we had quite a few permits come through through Metronet last week, maybe two, I want to say. Uh, this would have been uh, last Saturday, I think it was. Saturday. Yeah. My recommendation is always call the police non-emergency number um, and have them come check it out. Well, he was a nice kid. I talked to him for almost an hour outside. <laughs> <laughs> Not it's about Metronet time. either. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, they. no matter if they're... But he left the city after I informed him. Yeah. When he left my place, he left. Yeah, 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 but any of them, they, if there's a group of five coming up, it's not a group permit, it is an individual permit, and they're supposed to have individual copies on them. I, I just wanted to clarify from my own yeah. knowledge that that was still in that force. It is, yep. Okay, thank you. And then with the Do Not Not Registry, we're going to make it a lot more transparent for everyone. We'll do that list online, which I think is going to be great, because then someone can really go to that line, uh, online list and be like, well, you, your name's not here, so I don't think you have a permit, per se, but... We're, we like the transparency the do not not registry is going to create. Well, when they get the permit, will they be handed that list mm -hmm. or not? Okay. Yeah. Sure will. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. that was what Would it be beneficial if uh, we had a list of those people that did have a permit posted somewhere on the website? What's... what's what we're going to do, sir. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. We'll have a list. It'll be on the website, stuff like that. So, if, like, if you're sitting at your house, you can go to the city website and find that active list for sure. All right. Does anybody have? Go ahead, Peg. Several years ago, it was brought up about legislation for fireworks being let off, let off in town, mm -hmm. and we kind of tabled it to see what the state did. And since that got passed. Do we want to reconsider limiting what kind of fireworks people can be setting off and when? Any comment?
I know there are other cities that have limited the fireworks type and time. Um, I know we were having fireworks at 1 and 2 in the morning here in town this past 4th. I think that, I guess the word is a little uh, overkill. And if council, go ahead, Peg. As the two weeks prior and the two weeks after, they continued. So you're getting fireworks for an entire month. And I had them on the south end of town until 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. Do I hear a motion to uh, have city manager look into the possibility of legislation on the fireworks? So you don't need a motion. If she wants to draft legislation and bring forth, she could just do that on her own. All right. Yeah. We got that done. Anybody got anything else? Go ahead, Kat. Did we find out anything on the drones that we were talking about? I personally looked over a lot of the drone legislation from other cities. Basically, the only thing that most of those cities had anything to do with a drone was in their own parks. There was nothing mentioned in any of that legislation that precluded anybody from flying a drone over anyone's house or any other area other than city parks. What it, legislation did come up, it referred you back to the FAA. Well, I know the state of Ohio is working on a drone law, but they're like midway in the process of it. And I thought maybe we would want to get on board before, because they will move very slowly on that. I have not seen any legislation at this point. Well, Randy was going to look into it, I have, thought. Jay got back to me this morning at 8.26 8, a.m., so I'll be going through that and then send you my email to council. Okay. All right. Anything else? Mr. Mayor, I have a statement I'd like to read. I was getting to you. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, Madam Clerk, Mr. City Manager, I have been living for my, by myself for nearly 14 years, and I've been able to fend for myself with no problems, cooking, cleaning, yard work. I was able to get it done but no more. My health has deteriorated to the point that I am very weak. I have serious problems with cooking and cleaning and I definitely cannot do yard work. Last week I fell three times and was in, unable to get myself up. I had to rely on our incredible medics to help get me on my feet. Then my doctor told me that I am no longer to care, able to care for myself. So in the near future, I'll be moving in with two of my children, both live out of town. I've been on New Kalau City Council for four and a half years, and I have considered it a privilege and an honor to serve the community that I love. Unfortunately, that must come to an end, too. I hereby resign my seat on New Kalau City Council, effective July 31st, 2024. Thank you to everyone who voted for me. God bless us, each and every one. Amen. Sorry to hear that. With that, I will say, Dale, it's, it's been a pleasure. Uh, you and I have not <laughs> always seen eye to eye, but we have maintained a friendship, a relationship, and I think you've been a great asset to this city and to the council. Anyone else like to we say We don't anything? always agree, but we do respect each other. That's it. You will be sorely missed. Go ahead, Peg. I'd kind of like to just repeat what Mr. Cook said. And we disagreed on a lot of things. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> but we remain friends. And I'll still give you a hard time for bare feet. You'll have to come to Urbana to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we might just all pile in and come on one day. He, he still walks around bare feet. I saw him over the weekend. I thought, Dale, what are you doing? 
With that... Had long pants on, too. I believe I need a motion to go into executive session to discuss employment of a public employee. So moved. Second. Shammy Lindsay. You talking about Randy? Not yet. <laughs> Vice oh, Mayor well, I'm a surprise. Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Motion accepted. Seven zero. Uh, Move to go back to the regular session. Second. All right. Lindsay Shammy. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Angleson? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? He's excused. Yeah. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Moved to adjourn. Second. With that, we are adjourned. adjourned. Not yet, not yet. Not yet. Nope. That was just to go back to regular session. Oh, oh sorry about that. That's Moved to adjourn. Right. Second was Shammy? Yeah. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Shandy? Yes. Now we're adjourned.